Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another one of my bread videos. This recipe is a great favourite with our customers, friends and family and it's these delicious cheesy baguettes. It's similar to my French baguette video but you'll be pleased to know with the addition of extra yeast this one doesn't take as long to complete. And here's a list of the ingredients you'll need if you want to have a go at making them yourself. And as the caption says, this recipe will yield 8 9 inch, that's 23 centimetre, delicious cheesy baguettes. OK, I'll start the recipe by adding to the bowl 700 grams, that's 24 and a half ounces of strong white bread flour. That is to say, white flour with at least 12% protein in its ingredients. Now add the salt and whisk that in before adding the yeast. Right, add the yeast and the chives. The chives are optional but they do give the finished bread a mild onion flavour. And whisk those into the flour too. Time to add the cheese. The cheese will mix into the flour easier if it's straight from the fridge. Now gently fold it in using the whisk as shown. Right, time to add the 520 grams, that's 18 and a half ounces of cool water. Try to use bottled or filtered water if you can, as the chlorine in tap water can slow the activity of the yeast down. Slowing down the fermentation process in some recipes is ok but not in this one. Now bring the ingredients together until it reaches a sticky mass as shown in the video. You can use a mixer for this initial mix but only until it comes together. This only takes about 90 seconds by hand in real time. So unless it's absolutely necessary it's not worth having to set it up and then you have to clean your machine afterwards. Right, I'll cover the door. I like to use a shower cap, but you can use cling film, plastic wrap or even a damp tea towel and set the timer for the first of two 45 minute rises. As you can see, the door has risen some, but not a lot on this first occasion. I now need to give the door a quick fold, this is to mainly even out the temperature. So I lightly wet the bench and scrape the door out of the bowl and with wet hands give the door a few turns. If it sticks to the bench a bit like mine has, just loosen it off with your scraper. Once it's had a few folds, you can visibly see it getting smoother. Ok, clean up your work area and get it back into the bowl and set the timer for the second and final 45 minute rise. Right, while I'm waiting for the second rise I can start to prepare a couple of things. First I'll oil a strip of cling film or plastic wrap and set it aside for now. This is to cover the pre-shaped baguettes as you'll see a little later. The second is to grease a couple of baking trays. I'm using a little lard to do mine. It's always best to get these jobs out of the way ahead of time. You'll also need to prepare what's known in the trade as a well-floured baker's couche. All it is is a piece of material to rest the baguettes on for the final rise. I'm using a 100% cotton pillowcase I nicked from the linen cupboard. And I'm seriously praying that she doesn't watch this video. 
OK, the second 45 minutes are up and it's time to start pre-shaping the baguettes. I'll start by dusting the work area with flour. Then I'll scrape the dough out of the bowl and give the dough a dusting of flour too. This is to prevent sticking when cutting it with the scraper. And as you can see, after the second 45 minutes, the dough is full bodied and well risen. Right, time to divide the dough into four equal pieces. If your measurements were right at the beginning, the total weight of the dough should be 1300 grams, that's 46 ounces. So the four pieces should weigh in the region of 320 grams, that's 11 and a half ounces each. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten that we're doing eight baguettes. It's just easier to pre-shape them in four pieces. Okay, it'll be simpler if you just watch how I pre-shape these baguettes. This is an important step as it allows the dough to rise and relax making it much easier to form the final baguette shape. Once they're all formed, cover them with the previously oiled cling film. Then have a bit of a clean up, especially if you've dribbled oil from the plastic wrap like I have, and set your timer for 15 minutes. Once that 15 minutes is up, I can start forming the finished baguette shape. OK, I'll redust the worktop with flour and uncover the pre-shapes one at a time. And each one will have to be cut in half. You'll have to eyeball them at this point. If you try to weigh them, you could end up with little bits all over the place. But get them as close as possible. But don't worry about it. At the end of the day, these baguettes are handmade and not churned out like some factory robot machine would. And if one baguette ends up bigger than the other, just grab it before somebody else gets their mitts on it. And once again, it'll be easier to watch how it's done rather than try to explain it. But try to do it as quickly as possible, because the more you handle the dough, the more it'll tighten up and become a bit difficult to shape. If this happens to yours, just let it relax for a few minutes and it'll become more pliable again. Once the baguettes are formed, get them onto the couche as shown and give them a light dusting of flour as you go. Once you've just about formed each baguette, finish off by sealing the base with the heel of your thumb as shown in the video, making sure the seam is at the bottom when transferring it to the couche.
Right, I'll quickly go through the rest of them. Forming these baguettes takes a little practice, but once you get used to it, you'll just fly through them. Honestly, it's more difficult for me to do these slowly for the video than at my normal speed. I'm not this quick mind. Once all eight are done, get them on the cushion, cover them with a dry, lightweight tea towel and set the timer for 20 minutes. Now these actually take 30 minutes to rise, so when the time's up, reset for another 10 minutes and that'll allow the oven to get up to temperature. Right, once you reset the timer, turn on the oven and set the temperature to 230 degrees Celsius, that's 445 Fahrenheit or gas mark 7. I'm setting mine to 210 Celsius, allowing 20 degrees Celsius for the fan assist. You'll also need to place a pan of hot water on the bottom shelf of the oven. This creates a steamy atmosphere to help the baguettes become crispy. Right, time's up. Now with light hands, and that means with very little grip, gently transfer the baguettes over to the baking tray. Now space them out like I'm doing in the video, and that gives them a little room to expand and rise. Once they're all on the tray, give them a spray with water before scoring them with a razor blade or an extremely sharp knife like mine as shown. Now garnish the tops of the baguettes with a little cheese as shown. Don't use too much as it may inhibit the spring or rise in the oven. Right, I'll do exactly the same with the other tray. The oven's up to temperature and now it's time to bake. Try to get them into the oven as quickly but as carefully as possible. Before closing the door, give the inside of the oven a spray with water. This will make the baguettes even more crispy. Now set the timer for 16 minutes. After 10 minutes, flip the trays back to front and top to bottom for even cooking. To avoid a blast of hot steam, open the door very slowly. Swap the trays around and close the oven door as quickly as possible. After the 16 minutes, take these wonderful baguettes out of the oven and get them on a wire rack to cool. And as the caption says, you may well have to restrain yourself from diving in with a butter knife between your teeth. The smell of freshly baked bread is fantastic enough on its own, but when it's combined with the aroma of toasted cheese, it's downright irresistible. And just listen to how crispy and light these are. Well, you can't actually hear how light they are, but you know what I mean. Now, there's only one more thing to do, and that's the all-important taste test. I think I'll make myself a nice ham sandwich while they're still warm. Well, the crumb inside this bread looks wonderful. Not as bubbly as my French baguette video recipe, 
but that's because this has only had two 45 minute risers which results in a better structure for sandwiches and of course I'd be using some of my homemade butter and if you want to know how to make your own butter I have a video on my channel I'll leave a link in the description box below this video Right, I'll get some of this delicious lean honey roast ham on and with the flavour of the cheese and chives it only needs a little sea salt and pepper and nothing else. Right, here we go. And as I knew, this is absolutely delicious. And the filling choices are endless for this sort of baguette. I really hope you give this one a try. Because believe me, your thumb will be up too. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.